What's going on everybody? I'm Jason, Tennessee Mountain Homestead, and today we're locking the axle. In this John Deere mud mower, there's a Peerless 2300 four-speed transmission. It can go one of either two ways. It might just have a plain old open differential, or it may have a limited slip. We're going to find out. So for ease of access, we took off the body panel and the gas tank to get better access at the transmission bolts. Now the plan is to unbolt the transmission. We could do it from the frame and this whole thing would drop out, that plate and everything, or something I haven't done yet, we can just take the bolts out of the transmission itself that hold it to the frame. And we're probably gonna do it that, that way this time. We tried to take it out with just the bolts holding it to the frame and that's not gonna really happen. I mean, it could if we really struggled, but the bolts are a little bit too close to the side. You can see right there. And once we take it off like we normally do, we'll take off the six bolts that hold this whole subframe assembly to the frame. We'll drop the tires and do it that way. It's a lot easier. We've got this thing supported, so it'll be even, it'll be even easier after that. Give us a minute, we'll be right back. Just like that, a few pieces. This is what holds the transmission. This is its own subframe. Here's the frame in the tractor. And as you can see over here on the workbench, we've got the transmission sitting up here on the, on the steel welding table. Now, the next thing we're going to do is watch a little refresher video. We're going to go ahead and watch Red ZZ02 on how he does his locking video. I've already seen this a couple times. I got it saved to a playlist. And since I'll, I don't do this all the time, I'm going to watch his video. I'm going to put that in a link in the description below, and I'm not going to film like every single thing we do. Like when it gets to the locking part, maybe we'll, we'll film that. And if, depending on which one this is, if it's the limited slip or if it's the open differential, his is a limited slip. And then OK Off-Road Mowers, which I'll also show, and in the, in the, I'll put a link to his channel in the, in the bottom. He does, if it's a limited slip, there's another way to lock it without welding. So we're going to watch this and figure out how to open the case. And once we get that open, we'll be right back. The hubs came off very easy. Literally, there was a, a, a snap ring, and it was the hubs were cast iron. We got them laying over there. But those hubs, I just was able to use my fingers and my thumbs and, and pull them straight off. There was no, nothing was corroded, and they weren't stuck on. Now, we took it outside, and we pressure washed it. And during that process, I managed to, to uh, make one of these bearing seals come unseated. And it's no big deal. They're both the same size. Nothing's broken. But I'm not sure that axle grease, that the gear oil gets into these shafts and greases these bearings. These outer bearings look like they're sealed bearings with grease in them. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do is remove the axle tubes. And one more point of interest is that this is a Peerless 2333, and these came in John Deere's. So we're going to get the axle tubes off, we're going to get this, the case split in half, and we're going to pull off the upper case half, as we saw on Red's, uh, o, Red ZZ02's video, and we're going to see what kind, of uh, what kind of differential we have. More in a minute. We got the case half separated, we got the differential out, it was very straightforward if you follow what Red ZZ02 did on his video. Like I said, I'm not going to show every step because he already did it, and I'm basically just copying what he did. So I was also really hopeful that this was going to be a limited slip like the OK off-road mower's uh, transmission was, but it's not. It's the same as the one as Red ZZ02 has. It's the open differential with the spider gears and the planetary stuff. So that's it. We're going to do the same thing he did. You can watch his video. We're going to weld this up. We're going to weld. We're going to fill in next to where these gears sit. Just like he did. So now what we're going to do is put these in this stainless steel dish. All the pieces that we need to, to weld. And they has to be perfectly clean. So we're going to use some degreaser first. Then we're going to wash it with hot soapy water. Then we're going to take brake cleaner acetone to it. Then we're going to get it all lined up and we're going to weld it up and we'll show you the end result. It's a couple hours later, but we got all this stuff prepped out, clean, 
clean is the, is the most important thing. And it's amazing how when something's very clean, how nice it welds. Anyway, you come in here and see this. This is the locker. We got our welds all the way around. Nice, I burned it in pretty hot. So here's the locker. And I did the extra on the spider gears that he talked about in his video. And this fits like this. This fits like this. And now we've got a locked differential. So we're gonna start. We're gonna just start reassembling this thing, and uh, we'll get back with you when it's all done. So the axle's locked. The differential, the spider gears are all welded up. Everything's ready to go. We got it back in the case. The old gasket basically came apart when we took this case halves apart. So we scraped off the old gasket material, came off real easy, and now we're just going to put it back with some RTV. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at what it looks like inside one of these things. In case you weren't um, looking at the other video I, po I uh, put the description to. And here's the other half of the case. So, like I said, we're going to get that back together. We're going to put it all back together. And we'll, uh, get, we're going to paint this thing before we put it back in the mower, but that'll be probably tomorrow, and we'll see you then. It's been about a day and a half since we uh, did the locker on this thing when you guys saw us last. And since then, I put it back together, and I gave it a fresh paint job, because that way you know it's special now. And we gave the hubs a fresh paint job too. I got a little carried away and started working on this before I filmed anything. But before I got too far, I wanted to uh, cut you guys in. So if you see here, I cut four holes with a hole saw. Because this is going to sit like this. On top of this stock plate. Now what I'm going to do is take a saw. And I'm going to cut these holes together. And that's going to be... That's going to let me insert this 2 inch receiver in through the frame, just maybe about a quarter inch past it. So that way I'll be able to weld it around inside, outside, and along this factory hitch here. And just like that. We gotta remove a little bit more material with a file or something, but it's gonna work out. Just like that, we got our reese hitch. So this, the reese hitch is gonna be right here. It's got this lip around it, this reinforcing lip, and it really can't go any further back unless I was to cut this, but I don't think I need to because. So I had a second thought. I wanted the the hitch to be as far in towards the mower as possible to, to relieve leverage on this. So I cut off the end of this stock hitch. So that way this will fit in here better all the way up to that lip. And then inside we measured another tractor to make sure we weren't going to hit the back of the transmission and we're not. We got about an inch. This line is where I'm going to cut the sleeve off at and we got another inch to go before we hit the transmission. So whatever ball we decide to stick in this thing, whatever implement, we should be good to go on clearance. Next, we're going to grind off the paint and get ready for the weld. Before we go welding the reese hitch in, I also wanted to clean up the way this thing looks by taking the, the square, the squareness off the back. So we gave it these nice angle cuts, give it a little more ground clearance. You'll be able to see the painted paint job on that pumpkin. And also I think it's going to replace, uh, you know, counterbalance the weight that we're adding to this thing by taking some out back out. The Judy Chop. So this here is the weight that we cut off of the back of it, and this is what we're going to add back to it. 
and it, honestly, it feels about equal. We got it all cleaned up and we're ready to burn it in. Go ahead and check it out. This is going to be what it is. Come around over on this side, you can see how it, in the back it protrudes through. We're going to get it in there nice and clean like right there. Nice and clean like. So we got it all burned in. I must say, I did do a couple passes on the sides, and um, it turned out to be a pretty fat weld. Anyway, this thing is going to be ready for paint next, and then we're going to start the reassembly process and get this thing back on the tractor. Look in here. Got the back side too. That hitch ain't going nowhere. What are you going to go do with it? A tree that has many branches. You're going to cut a tree with many branches? Yeah. All right, be careful. I know. All right. So we're out here in the paint booth covering up all the little imperfections. And remember guys, a little bit of flat black makes it all go away. All right guys, so it's the next day. We've got these things all painted, put back together, hubs. We got the pulley, the brake. I got a ball hitch in here to demonstrate the way that this uh, receiver hitch was, was put in. So the next thing we're gonna do is get this bolted back into this and bolted back into that, and we'll see you in a minute. Oh man, this little transmission is looking like a hog's leg. It's looking, sitting here looking so tough, I just wanna spank it. So it's been many hours later since we talked last, and uh, since the last clip, and what you can see here is we've got the transmission in. I had the shifter lever on backwards. It was 180 degrees out, so I had to take that off and re-RTV it back in the right position. Then I got in and I re-engineered my whole clutch spring, so I went to Tractor Supply and got a new spring, a more stout one. We had to move the oil pump, we had to rotate it, I mean the fuel pump, a little bit. And here we are. So we just got done putting gear oil in the transmission. We're going to close the transmission up, put the fuel tank back on, put the body back on, and take her for a rip. See you soon. It's been another day putting this thing back together. And last time I talked to you guys, I mentioned that we put a new clutch uh, spring in the back of the tractor there. Well. Here's my issue, is that ever since I put this thing together and started it up the first time, the clutch pedal, when it's engaged, when the belt's under tension, the clutch pedal sits there and it shudders a little bit, it vibrates, quite a bit in some cases. And I tried to, saw, I tried to fix that issue with adding more and more powerful springs, and even a spring on the outside of the frame pulling on the clutch pedal itself, thinking that enough spring tension will overcome that shutter effect. Well, I added a spring yesterday, and with the two combined, it was a little bit too much. I didn't even start it up and try it, because I was worried that the belt was now under so much pressure that it's gonna, you know, ruin the life of the transmission pulley and the engine pulley, probably. There's bearings in there, and I didn't want to compromise those bearings with so much pressure, and all the idler pulleys. So. I came up with this idea. This is the clutch this is the clutch pedal right here. I came up with this mechanism here. Now this is the clutch pedal and it it bolts to this extension on the clutch. And when you depress it, it releases tension on the belt. Now what I did here was I I fabricated this this stopper mechanism. 
so that I could have this spring pulling back on the clutch pedal but not adding any more resistance or any more pressure to the belt system itself. This should just hold the clutch pedal from shuddering while, the, while it's engaged. Should be nice and stiff. And then, like I said, the only spring adding any tension to the system is the main spring inside that we added yesterday. A nice fresh new spring. And it seems to have about the right amount of tension. This without the stopper just added like another 30 pounds of force into the system so if you can kind of wrap your mind around that it took me like five days to think to think of this that's how smart i am you know so that's where we're at and with that we're going to get this thing put back together and now I'll try to take it for a test rip we finally got this thing out we're going to take it for a few little test rips to showcase the locker and uh Without further ado, I'm going to run over a few things around here, and I'll be back in a minute. Let's the inside tire feels out. today's video well the last five days video anyway guys we made a lot of progress we're gonna do more we got more stuff coming stay tuned like and subscribe please comment and as usual I'm Jason Tennessee Mountain Homestead and we'll see you on the next one